Hey everyone, and welcome back. It is Wednesday. We're going to do a Way Back Wednesday episode here and do a couple more packs of 1993 tracks, which we'll go ahead and take those out right now. Two packs of those. <coughs> Excuse me. But before we do that, I'd like to weigh in on everyone's thoughts on the Kyle Busch to RCR situation. If you heard the big news yesterday, Kyle Busch did sign with Richard Childress Racing for the foreseeable future in terms of multi-year contract. And the term multi-year contract is very vague anymore. They can have a two-year contract, and they say that's multi-year. <coughs> My opinion is a multi-year contract is three, four, five, six years. But nonetheless, if you listen to the press conference yesterday, it was very interesting. Uh, Richard did say one of the reasons he wanted to hire, hire Kyle was the, I guess, the intensity, uh, the, the, just the, the level of fire that Kyle has, he said, reminded him so much of Dale Earnhardt. And I know that's going to bring out all the haters uh, just because of the comparison. But to come from Richard Childress, I, I don't think that should be taken lightly. Um, just looking at the drivers of Richard Childress, and RC did say that he felt that this is the most intense driver he will have in a car since Earnhardt. I think Harvick comes close. Uh, early Harvick, the 01 to 05 Harvick, was still finding his footing, if you will, and I think was really overreaching and, and, and did overstep some bounds like Kyle Busch and, and Tony Stewart and Denny Hamlin and others have done over the years. I think that the later Harvick at RCR, and even to this day, the, the more wiser and still hard-charging Harvick has, <clears throat> has an intensity, but it's a different energy. It's a different type of intensity than Kyle Busch has. Uh, maybe the other, only other ones that come close, maybe to a small degree, Robbie Gordon, but I believe he was just over-aggressive. Mike Skinner was very aggressive, but he just didn't lack... I don't know what Skinner lacked. I think more than anything, maybe experience in a top-flight car in a top-flight series for a period of time. And then Boyer was a good driver, but he he was high energy. He just wasn't super aggressive. Jeff Burton was kind of free-falling in his career, as was Newman. And Newman could be one of the most aggressive drivers out there. But again, it's a different energy. And I'm looking at other numbers. When Dale Sr. signed with Childress in 84... He turned 33 that year. When Kyle Busch signed this year, when he starts driving for Childress next year, he will be 37. So there's an age similarity there, maybe four or five years difference. So there is opportunity, I think, for Childress to maybe mold Kyle Busch in the same way that he did do with Earnhardt. Maybe he likes to work off that energy. But but we'll see what happens. It's, it's all going to be very interesting. And the fact... Two things, two big strong things. He's driving for the same owner that Dale Earnhardt drove for, and he's going to use the same number that Dale Jr. had. So he's he's taking a huge fan base, he being Kyle Busch, he's taking that fan base, and it's like, how's the fan base react? Do they... Are people going to stop liking Childress and Chevrolet and, and maybe even Junior just by association of number that Kyle Busch is driving that car? We'll have to see what happens. I, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting dynamic next year when the cars show up to the L.A. Coliseum. And that's one thing Kyle Busch said. He, they, they said, what, may, what was one of the things that you noticed about RCR? He says, when we were at the Coliseum and that eight car blew my doors off out there. He knew how competitive that team was and the potential that they had. And Austin Dillon was the one that told RC, hey, why don't you sign Kyle Busch? He's available. So it'll be a really, really interesting story. I think he will have a much better year than Brad Kay is having in the six car. I think in two or three years, Brad Kay will turn that program around. But we see how bad they are struggling this year. But Kyle Busch, he's go, he's stepping into a car that's won twice this year. Where does that put Reddick? Uh, Childers did say that Reddick will be in a third car, in a third chartered car. The only two options I see are drop him in the 31 with Collig or drop him in the 77 at Spire because he's still under contract for one more year. 
unless Michael Jordan writes a check and says, hey, let's put him in the 23 or we'll get another car for him over here. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with Reddick as well, because he's kind of out on that island that nobody wants to be. He's that very lame duck driver, and I think that's going to hurt Reddick for next year. So anyway, enough of that. We've rambled for five minutes. Wanted to give you my thought process on that. Let's go ahead and open up a couple of these packs, which they're foreshadowing the 2017 Donruss with just black printing on silver foil, which never works for anybody in the history of mankind, but we continue to do it in the 21st century. So not sure why we didn't learn from 1993 tracks. But there are uh, instant win cards for I don't know what. Maybe you win a can of Maxwell House coffee or something. Here's our little instant one. That's the Andy Hillenberg Fast Track Experience uh, little promo piece. I'm going to start off with Terry Labani driving for Kellogg's Racing. Listen to the Scene Vault podcast uh, episode from last week. Pete Wright, who was kind of a co-crew chief on this car, talks about a cheating device that they had on the car in Wilkesboro of 1993, the fall race that almost allowed them to win the race, but ended up cooking a cylinder and hurting them in the long run. Little Al, who made one Cup Series start in 1993, the Daytona 500. Longtime Bush Series driver Jim Bound, who has some Cup Series starts, mostly at Riverside, has a couple top tens out there in the mid to early 80s. Joey Knuckles, longtime crew chief for Davey Allison, on and off. Derek Cope, who drove for Kale Yarbrough in 1993 and part of 1994. 1993, they picked up the Bojangles famous Chicken and Biscuits sponsorship. Alan Koike, this is chronicling some of Alan's career. This would have been his first win at Phoenix in 1988. <clears throat> Summit meeting, you got Joe Nemechek, Ricky Craven, and Todd Bodine during their Bush Series days. First run card, Harry Gant climbing into his Skull Bandit. This is probably the Chevy. <coughs> Let's see if his uniform says Chevy on it. I don't see the word Chevy or Oldsmobile, so it's hard to tell. First run, Jimmy Hensley with the Napa decal. That tells me that this is when he was subbing for Jimmy Means in 1993 for a few races. Brett Bodine, who is the longest tenured driver for Kenny Bernstein in the Quaker State Buick, driving that car from 1990 to 1994. Ted Musgrave, driving the U.S. Air Jasper Engines car. And Steve Meal, crew chief for Mark Martin. Give you a peek at the backs of these cards. They kind of have like a, a marble finish there. A faux marble finish. Definitely not a marble finish. And they just noticed they spelled his name wrong on the back of the card. That's how his name should be spelled. And it is misspelled on the back of the card. But they did spell... And they even misspelled it there. Well, that's... Uh, bad proofreading tracks. Bad proofreading. I think Steve Meal is one of those crew chiefs that eventually gets in the Hall of Fame. Start off pack two with Dave Marcus, longtime independent driver, third most career starts. Bud Moore, legendary car owner, D Day veteran. Was it D Day? Normandy? Yeah. I can't. Let's read that because I want to make sure I have it right. I knew that he was uh, in World War II, but I can't remember what. I always get a lot of those important dates mixed up, but he was on the invasion of Normandy. I don't want to say D-Day, but I know <clears throat> the folks that are a little bit more history-wise uh, will correct me. The Winston from 1992, under the lights, first time a super speedway was held under... Uh, Dark in dark conditions under the lights, of course. Pennzoil transporter Michael Waltrip for Bahari. Rick Hendrick got Young Guns, Ward Burton, and Todd Bodine in the Bush series. Joe Rutman driving for Dick Moroso's team. He was later released in favor of Randy LaJoy, which helped Randy's career take off. First run card of Ward Burton. First run card of Coach Joe Gibbs. First run card of Troy Selberg, who was crew chief for Lake Speed at the time. Got a cup rookie card of Jeff Gordon. 
This is the third Gear Tracks card that he has. And our final card is guest star Alan Sir Jr. Driving for Hendrick Motorsports at Daytona in 1993. See if there's anything spectacular about that. Not really. But that wraps up today's video. Again, uh, what's everybody's thoughts about the Kyle Busch to RCR situation? I think it's going to be pretty fruitful. Uh, it's going to... Uh, I think it's going to be very beneficial to both parties. I think that Kyle brings a lot of... Obviously, RC has a lot of experience, but he's RCR has had some pretty dry years for a long time. And, and, you know, yeah, Austin Dillon has four wins. And, you know, if you really want to get technical, you know, the first win at Charlotte was on fuel mileage. The second win at Daytona, he wiped out Almirola on the last lap third win at Texas uh, was a two-tire call at the end of the race, which got him track position, and then the win, this last win at Daytona, you know, he squeaked through the big crash it took out the rest of the field, so, I mean, if people want to get technical, yeah, like, like, if, if Kyle Busch wanted to say something about Bowman backing into wins, he should have been saying that about Austin Dillon, but he didn't, but I think that, <clears throat> I think that Busch brings... He brings a lot more to the table. I think sponsors will start lining up. They said they have some sponsors lined up. We'll see. But I think it's it, it. this is one of the biggest moves that the sport has seen in a long time. You know, going from one team to another. I can't, you know, I, I think that it's obviously a bigger move than Brad Kay going from Pinsky to Roush. I think it's probably a bigger move than Stewart going from Gibbs to SHR. Maybe not as big as Junior going from uh, DEI to Hendrick. That was pretty groundbreaking. I can't think of anything else right off the top of my head as far as drivers switching rides that, you know, that, that were that big. Martin leaving and going to Bobby Ginn. But, you know, Martin was kind of on his way out anyway, so that wasn't really a surprise. And there may be a few others in there that I'm missing. Harvick to, to SHR was a pretty big move. Um, that's really it, guys. I, I can't think any more to say about that that whole situation. I think we knew um, there's only two or three teams that, that Bush could have went to, which would have been 2311, uh, RCR, and That That was literally it. That was literally the rides on the table. So... I think he took the best option. I think he will have a good... I think this is where he's going to wind his career down. I think he's probably going to run six or eight more years. He'll probably get into that 75 to 85 win mark and maybe another title or two, and then he'll call it a career. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's been more talking and less cards, but, you know, big news day. I kind of, you know, we're going to start doing this a little bit more often, having these little chats with y'all and, and, and see what you guys have as far as your opinions on big news items like this so anyway thanks again for watching you know keep those likes coming keep those subscriptions coming keep those comments coming i love hearing from each and every one of you starting to see again more people showing up on the boards on the comments so i really do like that so thanks again for watching enjoy the rest of your wednesday and we will see you tomorrow